All righty. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's best practices for utilizing good acoustics, daylighting, and sustainability in modern school design. As you get settled, a few reminders before we get started. Please use the Q&A section for any questions today, and remember to be constructive in any of those questions or comments to the presenter and to one another to ensure we have a session that is productive. John will be answering all questions towards the end, so please keep filling in the Q&A until uh, we get to that portion. AIA California will submit one AIA HSW learning unit for those who complete the session live. And as always, the webinar content and additional resources will be available online shortly after the session. Today's webinar, which will explore the importance of good acoustical design, the benefits of natural daylighting and how acoustical metal deck ceiling systems can contribute, and the sustainability factors in acoustical medical med, metal deck ceiling system, specifically in the learning environment, is brought to you by Epic Metals. It qualifies for one AIA HSW learning unit for those who complete the session in full, which AIA California will report for you once you have finished the session. Now to introduce our presenter, John Heinley, AIA, has been the Western Regional Manager at Epic Metals for 18 years. He calls on architects and engineers in Nevada and California, assisting them in designing their pro projects with Epic Metals product. Licensed architect in the state of Colorado since 1994. He received his five-year Bachelor of Architect degree from Cal Poly Pomona and his AA in architecture from Santa Ana College. John, please take it away. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you everybody for coming today. I greatly appreciate your attendance. Um, I would like to thank everybody. Um, this presentation, as Rebecca said, will we'll give you one HSW, which is awesome. Um, as she said, I'm actually a licensed architect and AI member. Um, I think one of the things that's very interesting is that I understand what all of you do uh, because I practiced the profession for 14 years, which kind of makes me an anomaly compared to other people you might see. So um, I did all sorts of projects from hospitals to schools to churches got to design and build my own house. So I have a varied background in architecture. And like Rebecca said, I've been with Epic for 18 years. Um, with that, um, Epic is an architectural metal deck manufacturer. We are not in the business to compete with NDEC and BDEC profiles. Our niche is in school projects, in places that need high levels of learning because acoustics are so important in those spaces. Uh, what if I could also change the way you think about roof and floor deck? Look at all those black lines sticking through the deck. Those are screw shanks. Screw shanks are very unappealing in the design of many of these buildings because in using N deck or B deck profiles, you're using a system that has very low levels of acoustical properties, which I will explain shortly. So all of our profiles have the, the capabilities of hiding the fasteners that are used um, to attach the thermal uh, insulation that goes on top of the deck. We are also very committed to sustainability as a company. Um, we've done many LEED certified projects across the United States. Um, but one of the major things that is very important to us is how we respect our environment that we all live in. Um, this is one of the plants we have in Bartow, Florida. The majority of our manufacturing is done in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, where we have two plants and a third plant in Bartow, Florida. The building on the left is our manufacturing facility that has all of our manufacturing of our MSR deck profile. The solar panels that are there on the ground on the outside create enough electricity for all the manufacturing to be done 
by the electricity generated by the solar panels. In our plant in um, Pittsburgh, in Rankin, we use wind turbines um, to create the electricity that is needed for the manufacturing of our deck systems. So we are the only company that can make this statement on this slide is we're the first plant that's completely solar powered. That's a huge commitment. And many times, you know, like they say in the airline industry, when you get on a plane, we know you have many choices when it comes to airlines. We know you have many choices when it comes to metal deck systems. And the fact that we're the only deck manufacturer that is completely made from solar power, our products, hopefully that's something you remember after today's uh, talk. We're a member of the U.S. Green Building Council. We have been since 2004. This is a list of many of the projects we've done that have been LEED certified. So how do we assist in the uh, LEED credits for a project? One is um, we can create an environmental product declaration, which is basically for the for the steel deck. Uh, it's not necessarily product specific, but it's for the deck per se. And that it means that the materials are 100% recyclable at the end of a building's life. We're also not owned by a steel mill like some deck manufacturers are. Uh, we are a privately owned company and we buy what are called coils. And those coils are used to manufacture the different profiles we make. Um, we can actually go out and find out where all the raw materials came from if that's needed as part of the material and resources of a specific project. We also meet the living building challenge red list free option, uh, which means all of the components of the product that may be used uh, isn't going to have any off gassing and isn't going to be bad for the occupants of the building space. That's a little bit of what the uh, declare label looks like. Now, here's an animation of basically different products. I obviously am not going to talk about all these right now, but let's say you were designing a community college in Northern California and you needed a large cafeteria space. Many times products such as what's called NDEC, which will span eight feet, look at all the bar joists you have in that space, look at all the uh, columns and joists and everything and how cluttered the space is. Well, this product that's on this animation is only going to have an NRC, a noise reduction coefficient, of 0.25 to 0.3. Well, what if you switch to something that was maybe two and a half inches deeper and look at what you just did to the space. You cleaned up the space and you also allowed for better sound absorption because technically there'll be less surface to bounce things off of. I'm gonna show you an animation on how important acoustics are but acoustics in schools, for any of you that design educational environments, and that's one of the areas we do a ton of work in, is oftentimes uh, kids spend, obviously, the majority of their time in classrooms, with, with the exception of recess, which was my daughter's favorite class. Um, sound, uh, acoustics, when kids are only learning in such a way to where they're only hearing one of every four words, that's really bad acoustical components in a school. And being that ours has an NRC of 0.95, that means kids are going to be having a better learning environment. Um, so again, this animation shows you how you can clean up the space, you can minimize the amount of steel, and by minimizing and getting rid of steel, you're uh, reducing the cost of the building and spanning with a longer spanning deck system. We also have the ability to hide the fasteners inside our dovetails 
our dovetail deck systems have the ability for the, the thermal envelope to be attached by screws. And it's very difficult for those screws to be seen inside a finished space. We also have the ability to use our hanging system that goes into the dovetail uh, component of our deck. So now the components that make this system important is you have a structural deck system that has high levels of acoustical properties and you can hang things from it um, at any point down the road. So if you're doing a media center or a library and you wanna hang school banners at different times, different festivities, you can do that by the use of our hanging system. The hanging system will support uh, upwards of 50 to 100 pounds per square foot. We can also do the same thing in a composite floor deck. Now, here's another aspect that's very important. One of the companies I used to work for was Unistrut Construction. Unistrut used to install medical equipment supports in hospitals all the time. Their rule of thumb as a, as a contractor was 20 to 30 minutes for every Hilti anchor. Well, Hilti anchors cost about a buck each, maybe two. And if they take 20 to 30 minutes, union carpenter rates here in California are over $100 an hour. That means $50 for every bolt that you're putting in, let's say, a large data center or uh, floor slabs that are six stories tall. Maybe there's 15,000 anchors. Well, 15,000 anchors times $50, $100 an hour, 30, 30 minutes, that's 50 bucks. That's three quarters of a million dollars just in um, anchoring, whereas ours will support uh, 680 pounds gravity loads only um, and can be installed in two to three minutes. My former boss at Unistrut, who unfortunately passed away about five years ago, did a data center with our deck in it, and he called me up and asked me how long he should expect to uh, it would take to install the anchors. And I said, five, two to three minutes. And he goes, well, I'm going to put in five minutes. And once they figured out how to install them, he said they did them in about a minute each. So that's in another important aspect of deck systems that have a hanging system like this that will allow you to save money on hangers. Here's what the hanging system looks like. So here's an example of a project that was done in Milwaukee for the Milwaukee Brewers. And the reason it's important to look at this building is because um, there's something in the acoustical world called the transparency index. And what you're looking at in this building is you're looking up through all of those perforations in our deck system. Um, as you can see, you can see a lot of blue sky. If a product has a high transparency index, that means sound is going to be absorbed by it. And obviously, uh, this product, you can see blue sky. So therefore, it's got a very high level of transparency index. Now, this animation is going to show you different NRC values, 0.35 versus 0.95. The bottom system has a lot of reflected sound in it, um, which is bad for school environments. Whereas the product on the top has an NRC of 0.95. And what you're seeing here also is a difference of total vertical perforations of nine inches versus 19.7, almost two and a half times, and almost two and a half times the amount of acoustical insulation in an Epic product compared to other systems. So I get asked all the time, how does your product compare to these commodity deck type systems? Well, I can't compare in price to them. And if that's what I'm being compared to, to be honest, it's a waste of time. Um, but if you're comparing our system to uh, a, an assembly 
that the line in the sand per se is 0.95 NRC noise reduction coefficient. That means that if you take this bottom deck profile and hang a T-bar grid that's seismically braced below it, and that assembly combined has an NRC of 0.95, um, our deck system will be less expensive than that. But obviously, contractors try to get people to look at just deck systems. So um, that's the battle I fight every day. And hopefully, um, this can help you understand some of the uh, value-added cost benefits to our system. And also, once the deck is installed, you, have, you don't have to do anything else. We also have the ability to utilize access panels for the hiding of utilities and electrical conduit and things like that. We can do them in many different ways. We can do them with removable access panels or hinged doors. We also have to make sure that in sound rooms, where there's a lot of noise being generated, that sound doesn't go from one room to the next. Uh, we've done some projects at uh, a company called One Workplace in the Bay Area, and they have these freestanding uh, conference rooms, basically, and our products sit on top of it. And you or a group of people could be in one conference room, and in the room next door, you will not hear anything in the conversation happening because these air dams close off the sound from being transferred from one room to the next. And they also get left off the drawings when our products are utilized a lot. Our products have actually been utilized quite frequently on jobs where uh, they've been part of the AI Committee on the Environment. Um, I'm not going to show you all of them today. Um, this was one that we did in Atlanta, Georgia. We did a very large building in downtown San Francisco called 181 Fremont. Um, our deck system that was utilized was utilized because of the hanging system and the frequency at which they could hang things quickly as part of the integral component of the building. The building was also on the cover of Modern Steel Construction magazine. Here's a during construction shot. Interesting side note of this building. There was about a year ago, there was a PBS show someone told me about, and they featured this building and the design team. And one of the things that was amazing about this building was that after a pro proposed um, 7.3 earthquake in downtown San Francisco. This building is intended to be reoccupiable in 15 to 20 minutes after the event, which is absolutely amazing. We've done a lot of different building types. We do everything from schools, churches, arenas, airports, convention centers, multi-story residential, uh, hospitals, canopies. Uh, I could literally go on and on on all the building types we've done. Um, we don't do a lot of strip commercial unless there's a canopy out front. Um, we do residential. We do custom residential. We even do these kit houses in California designed by a firm in LA. Building for Baylor's football stadium. The amazing part about this building was that our deck that was used had no acoustical insulation in it at all. And all they did was use our deck as the roof system. So there's no thermal envelope, there's no components. And with our dovetail system, they basically sloped it from inner ring to outer ring. And this cell that's in the middle of the deck was used as a gutter system so the rains and the hail that happened in Waco uh, get evacuated through uh, internal gutters and downspouts hidden inside the space. Um, and in this environment, they didn't care about sound absorbing. They wanted sound bouncing all over the place. 
stadium we did in Louisville, Kentucky. We were competing with, I, I believe, three other architects, and we had come and present to NVIDIA and to Jensen many times. We were getting ready for this penultimate presentation. It turned out to be a three-hour conversation, one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, that conversation started off with a question from him was, are you ready to find my soul? I've never had a client ask me that question before. From that moment, I knew this project was going to be special. VR was very much uh, integrated into the design approvals process here. Any new design ideas would not be approved without having seen it through VR. There's a difference at looking at something on screen and looking at it as you're surrounded by it. And if you're accurately modeling the light and the materials, you really feel like you're sitting in Endeavor when you really just are in a VR environment. It's really revolutionized the way that architects deal with their clients. It's the first chance where you actually get to not only understand what the building will look like, but you start to really understand what a space watch will feel like when you're actually in it. So the amazing part about that building, if I can step away for a second, is I don't know how many of you know who NVIDIA is or what they make, but they make media cards. And their media cards are used in the gaming and the 3D modeling industry. And the amazing part about this building is literally what they make is based on the equilateral triangle. So they literally took what they make as a product and reflected that up to the structure of these buildings. Um, the structure is all based on an equilateral triangle. And one of the things we did as a company to try and save money is how we, we generally send bundles of deck to a job site. Most buildings we do are rectangles or something similar to that. This was very intricate in that we needed to assemble the bundle shown in this flyover such that they were already sorted with the three foot pieces, the eight foot pieces, the 10 foot pieces. So when the decorator got the material on site, they didn't have to sort it sending up on the roof of this building. We did that for them and that made installation much quicker. We will do things like that all the time to help out on projects with our installers. Uh, we did both buildings uh, phase one and two. We also have a relationship with Solitube. So if you're trying to get more sustainability in a project by having these solar tube sky domes, we actually can do the cutouts at our factory so as to also save money by not having it be done in the field. Here's a project that we did in American Canyon High School. Those all uh, are 14 inch solar tube sky domes. We also have had some uh, great luck in working on projects that have received AI Education Facility Awards. This was in uh, San Francisco, the Art Institute at Fort Mason. It's actually a composite floor deck with our acoustical uh, component all in one system. We do a lot of indoor natatoriums and swimming spaces. I haven't done too many of them in my territory uh, because we have such perfect weather for the most part here in California. Uh, I did do a job in Qatar uh, because I do cover projects in the Middle East. Um, there's an architect here in LA that hopefully is designing some work in Kuwait that we will hopefully uh, do soon. But the important components inside a swim environment are uh, the corrosive chemicals and making sure you have good air changes. And in this uh, project, we used a tenemic type paint, and then we put a uh, bag around the acoustical insulation. Sonoma Academy. 
<laughs> excuse me, this was a project in San Diego County. Uh, it was a library. Our deck can be curved in the soft direction very easily, um, which allows for curved steel members and things like that. These products have an NRC of 0.95. We also have a series of profiles that are a half an inch deeper than our standard deck profile. So how does that apply? Well, we value engineered our own product. So in essence, a product that is two inches deep will compare equally in loads and spanning capabilities with a product that is two and a half inches deep. The difference is a two inch deep product may have to be 18 gauge whereas a two and a half inch deep product can be 20 gauge. 20 gauge, doesn't matter the depth, 20 gauge is cheaper than 18 gauge. That story can be told on any of these deck profiles pictured on this slide. We also have the ability to do hidden utilities inside composite floor deck systems. We basically take a piece of Unistrut at designated locations only, and have a removable access panel such that those systems can then be hidden inside the deck. Now, granted, there's depth considerations that have to be taken, and these utilities can only go um, parallel to the deck in this application. We also have the ability to install acoustical elements in different, different deck profiles, such that when they're shipped, they don't fall out and they're already in place when they reach the job site. Project that we did in Terra Bella, California, where the deck system utilized was used as a uniform design element throughout the entire building. And obviously, all the buildings we do, you're going to be exposing this deck system so that sound can be absorbed by it. Here's a recreation center we did in Utah. Again, the components that are important are a tenemic paint system that we apply at our plant. And then there's a field coat, field coat applied uh, at the job site. Um, and the insulation is all wrapped in bag. Project we did at uh, Northwestern University, Ryan Fieldhouse. It's also important to know that you're seeing lots of large buildings that are huge spaces. We also do everything from those types down to, I just sold a uh, hundred square feet to a guy in the San Fernando Valley that's building a canopy in his backyard. So we do all of that. Um, here's a library that we did in Coolidge, Arizona. The deck on most of our buildings when they, when they get utilized are often used as a uniform design element here. It's an example of you have acoustical deck being used on the inside and non-acoustical deck in the same profile used on the outside. Here's a uh, golf course in Hilo, Hawaii. So one of the other things we do is we have the ability to do finished paints. But here in California, doing finished paints are challenging because most of the deck gets welded into place. Finished paints can and will allow for less HAPs and VOCs into the environment. Also, we can do prime painted deck. Um, the dovetail deck shown here, what was done is we actually prime paint our deck on both sides of a sheet um, at our plant. And that allows for the deck to be shipped and welded into place or mechanically fastened, and then um, could be painted in the field after that. This job was actually, um, the deck was painted on top of our standard two-coat epoxy polyester primer. 
We also have products that are used in conjunction, not just with steel members, but glue lamb beams. Now, one of my biggest hot buttons, and I'll share it with you right now, is the direction utilities run. Oftentimes, it gets forgotten about. Oftentimes, maybe a design team was unaware that our products can utilize the hiding of utilities in a parallel direction and perpendicular with a profile I'm going to show you shortly. Um, here's an example of another indoor pool environment uh, that was in Aurora, Colorado, that had uh, our Natacoat system, which is all intensive purposes, a tenemic paint and bagged insulation. Uh, our deck was used on a project for Nike in Beaverton, Oregon. We've done a lot of different buildings. Um, we do a lot of Mercedes-Benz dealerships. Um, this one, for whatever reason, always reminds me of Star Wars, but we actually did the most recent Star Wars ride at Disneyland and Disney World. Um, I've yet to visit it. I might have to do it soon. Here's a, a project that we did in Othella, Washington. Uh, again, a uniform design element throughout the entire building. So the deck was used in a non-acoustical application outside. And then on the inside, they used our acoustical product for the absorption and, and sound qualities. High school that we did in New Mexico. And again, these are the types of spaces where sound absorption should be quite important. Um, do we get deck throughout every school? No, we don't. Do we get it where it's most important? Yes, we do. And that's in those learning spaces, classrooms, media centers, libraries, things like that. Here's an example of a high school that was in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Now, they did actually expose the electrical conduit, but it's quite hard to see it because they located the parallel ones right next to the dovetail, which was smart because it's less visible in that application. Eastside Community Center in Tacoma, Washington. Here's an example of a, a bus maintenance facility where our um, product was used in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. They had very high snow loads on this roof. So we've also started making sunscreens and sunshades. Uh, about five or six years ago, um, we started doing them. Um, and basically what we do is we take the normal profiles we already make and uh, we over perforate them. But make sure you see what this hot air balloon says, architects in California rock, because of course that's true. Um, the products can be used in a myriad of different applications as a trellis, um, running vertically, running horizontally with different paint finishes that we can do. Um, if there's a corporate color, we can oftentimes match that. Uh, for those of you in Southern California, today, if you drive through a couple places, I'm going to show you one of them shortly, but uh, the Division 13 bus maintenance facility in downtown LA near Alvera Street, and also the City of Hope parking structure has our products on it. So most people wouldn't think of using a system like this at a, I don't know, call it a college, call it a high school where you uh, want to accentuate the photos of the players uh, on an exterior wall with uh, a video wall, maybe. We don't do the video wall uh, with one of our sunscreens on the outside of it. So it's ways that um, maybe design teams hadn't thought about using our products before. Uh, these are the different assemblies that we make. They all have different spanning capabilities. Here's a project that we did. Uh, one of the firms I used to work for was RNL Design in Denver, Colorado. 
and the office in LA used us on this bus maintenance facility. Um, Alvera Street is just to the right of where my cursor is. Um, and the reason we got utilized is we were told that we were the most important component of this building because they wanted people to be able to see into this structure from all different levels and angles. And so for all intents and purposes, it's an open air structure. Um, and the deck was prime painted by us and then painted in the field. Here's a project we did in Bakersfield. Deck was painted by us uh, and then field painted in, in the field and then they put the logo on top of it. Project in Louisville, Texas that we did. We've done a lot of multi-story residential jobs all across the country. Most of the time those jobs have our MSR deck profile, which is a composite floor deck. In this application, the architect wanted to use our deck systems for a sunscreen and a sunshade. And instead of using a painted deck, they wanted us to do it out of anodized aluminum. So the deck was actually manufactured that way and the lengths were cut by us. So they all the ends were, were dipped, everything was good and the material arrived on site and they had to cut nothing in place. UC Davis, uh, Castilian Hall. This is one of our sunscreen systems where uh, the deck was prime painted by us and painted in the field that color. Our wide deck systems will span all sorts of deck spans. We even have some products that uh, will span upwards of 50 to 58 feet. I'm not gonna go into each and every one of them because of time, but uh, you're gonna see some good examples of those here shortly. Recycled content can be done in any of our deck profiles, we can get upwards of 61 to 70%, I think. We can also use recycled acoustical elements. I have a design firm that likes to use our, our uh, a Knopf brand acoustical element because of its recycled abilities. And then by, as I mentioned earlier, by having us paint the deck or prime painting it, we help eliminate HAPs and VA, VOCs into the environment, hazardous air pollutants and volatile organic compounds. In some deck profiles, we can use a cable suspended access panel so that the utilities can be inserted from the underside. We still have to use air dams and components like that. Um, so that sound doesn't go from one space to the next. So how do we put the Natacoat paint system on? Basically, the Natacoat is something that uh, is a tenemic paint. Basically, we start with G90 galvanized steel. We put a prime coat on the exposed top side. And then at our plant, we uh, put an intermediate coat, uh, Natacoat epoxy, and then we ship the deck to the job site. Technically, those holes in the deck are still bare, but once the field applied finish coat, which is an acrylic modified epoxy goes on, those holes aren't bridged, but they're protected from um, corrosion, corrosion. Here's Mesa State College that we did in Grand Junction, 29 foot spans between those trusses. Here's a very large airport that we did in Las Vegas. Um, 42 foot spans between uh, those trusses. Um, and we have all the uh, fire sprinkler, uh, pop down, recess pop down fire sprinklers located in there, and also all the building enunciation systems are spanning that. And yeah, it's a 42 foot span. Here's an example up at uh, Stanford of Frost Amphitheater, it's called, um, where they used our product as sound absorbing. Most of the time we don't do sound absorbing deck systems in an exterior environment. Um, 
but they wanted it and we used a uh, field applied paint system. So if any of you today are up in the San Jose area, this is the San Jose airport that we did. Um, interesting backstory on this project is that you can see all this fire sprinkler lines are running parallel to the deck. To me, that's not good. Does the deck look beautiful? Yes, of course it does. This is the land side. We also did the air side. Um, the change order we gave them for a cutout, for every cutout right here, we gave them $150 for every cutout. And it amounted to a change order of $90,000, whatever that comes out to as a quantity. Um, and at the time, they didn't have the money to pay us. But when the job was finished, they had a ton of money left over. And the contractor told me they should have uh, given us our change order so they wouldn't had had to look at these sprinkler lines. Um, they did a really good job making them straight, um, which is a good thing. International Terminal in San Francisco. Small winery that we did in Napa. If you were here in person, I'd ask you how many people are from Bakersfield. So if you're from Bakersfield, raise your hand. But most of the time, nobody ever raises their hand. Um, and I've been in Bakersfield and nobody raises their hand. But this is the best looking building in Bakersfield. Um, this is the Amtrak station. Most people think it looks more like a church than it does a train station. It's a beautiful building. It's got a lot of daylighting coming into the space. I don't think it's very big. I think it's probably less than 12,000 square feet. Um, but a lot of people think it looks more like a church. This building uh, looks more like a train station, but it's actually a church. Uh, the deck is actually triple spanning those glue lambs. Um, one of the reasons I love working for the company and love presenting to firms and companies and now individuals all together in one Zoom meeting is that the sooner that I get to help you select a product for your project, the sooner that spaces like this get to happen. Now, I know you didn't uh, look at the deck when you saw this image, but God bless you if you did. Um, this was also on the cover of Modern Steel Construction magazine um, and uh, used to be a courtyard that they filled in at Yale. Uh, Half Moon Bay Library that we did with uh, Nolan Tam Architects up in the Bay Area. Great project to work with them on. They actually uh, utilized all the hidden utilities on this project, and it was all attached to glue lamb beams. Different projects we've done. This is a celebration center at a cruise facility. Uh, Niagara Falls International Airport in New York, we actually have a product that uh, the deck can actually be tapered and they use this tapered deck profile alternating different directions on this building. So we have a product now that is very creative in that we have the ability to use concave, convex, flat, or this system called specular, uh, so that if you're trying to create some visual interest up on the roof, it can be done with this deck system. It comes in either four and a half, six or seven and a half inch deep sections. And the ceiling plate comes as a component within the deck and gets shipped together already in place. So you can do something similar to this uh, picture on your slide, picture on your screen. We can also take this system and do different wood grain finishes, dark cherry, colony maple, light maple and pine. Um, so it gives the appearance of a wood system when it's actually long spanning steel deck with high levels of acoustical properties. This product has an NRC of 1.0, which is perfect sound absorption. 
In this application, they married the deck to glue lamb beans. Um, and they, the other component of this, which I'm going to show you quickly, is how to hide the utilities correctly. Here's a fire station that we did in Texas with, again, sound absorbing qualities, uh, low maintenance as well uh, on maintaining these systems is very easy. Um, and this is attached to steel beams. All of our products, the majority of which I think now upwards of 95%, all have an evaluation report, which here in California is huge. And we've also uh, met all the standards and requirements for DSA. Uh, I've made presentations to DSA. Uh, I think I've been in each office. Now here's how to hide the utilities correctly with the use of a hinged access panel. Notice the oval cutout, that's called a companion hole. So hypothetically, if you wanted to run utilities parallel to the deck and then perpendicular one cell adjacent to each side, that allows you to hide all the utilities in this deck system, both parallel and perpendicular. So how does it apply to the real world? Well, here's a real world application of Dallas Love Field. You'll notice that this gentleman is standing up on his man lift and the, there's four, four cells that are open. The two on the left, he's already completed hiding of the utilities. The two on the right, he hasn't done yet. One of the things we do at our factory to assist with subcontractors being able to hang things the way they know how to is by installing a piece of Unistrut type, deck, type uh, channel up to the top hat of our deck. And that allows for um, them to put P1010s, P1026s, all of those. Um, and you can see the ones on the right he hasn't done yet. Um, here's after it was finished. Here's a project we did in New, New Mexico, port of entry project. March Air Force Base down here in Southern California. Uh, if you're a reservist and you get deployed, you go through this building. Uh, when I was out to the job site during construction, uh, kind of gave me a chill seeing people defending our country there must have been 300 people standing in line waiting to get on planes. Um, this deck is actually um, 28 foot spans between those trusses. We also get involved on different types of buildings that have different sound absorbing requirements. So if you look at different products we make, uh, you'll see at different sound levels or Hertz, if you will, frequencies, that our products have different sound absorbing capabilities. So most of the time in schools, churches, airports, it's pretty much all the same. But in an arena, we had to meet the sound absorbing qualities of a rodeo and a Carrie Underwood concerts. And this was a very large job that we did in Fort Worth, Texas. So we have a product that's used in multi-story residential, which has a ton of different um, capabilities and benefits for its use, none of which are technically sound absorbing, but they all have um, a sound transmission coefficient, which is very high. I believe we're up at it around 58 or 59 for STC which in apartment buildings and condos and dorms, that's big. We also have outside of East of the Rockies, we have a company that we work with called Infinity Structures that has a pre-panelized load bearing metal stud system. I'm also developing relationships with companies like them here in California because we've been quoting and selling a lot of multi-story residential projects and our deck is used in conjunction with those pre-panelized load-bearing systems. 
A lot of times the, the deck is either left exposed, they put furring channels, they put drywall below it, they tape and texture it and just paint it. Project that was done in San Jose. We also have a system that is used on lobby spaces inside buildings to create visual interest. Um, this is the spanning capability and the size of the system. Uh, we actually design the support systems and everything for it. I must say that we've done a lot of uh, different projects across the country and even in different parts of the world. Um, anytime that work ends up being published on the covers of magazines, it's pretty important to us. Um, we're a small company. Uh, we're about 120 employees. Uh, these are some examples of projects we've had done that have been on covers of magazines, whether they're local trade journals or national publications. The one on the lower right is actually the National Air and Space Museum in Chantilly, Virginia. And it was actually in the movie Transformers 2. We've had uh, a bunch of projects that have been utilized in movies. And I'm even ashamed to say that we had a uh, a job that was done in Newport Coast for a family that was building a house. And I thought it was the late Kobe Bryant at, at the time he was still alive because they were building a basketball court as part of their house. And as it turned out, it was a couple that was on the Real Housewives of Orange County. We also have a charitable foundation. So if we're working with your firm on a project that we need to make a donation uh, we're currently a sponsor of this event with Miyamoto Engineers, which I would encourage as many of you to attend. It's a fun event. Uh, it's called Night of a Thousand Drawings. Um, and we were a pretty large sponsor. Uh, we've also worked with different food banks uh, across the country. Uh, that's basically all I have. Um, don't forget, if you register on our website, there's also a continuing education article on there that you can further your education from what you learned today. Uh, and we also have, for anybody that registers, we also have a random drawing, a monthly drawing for a $100 American Express gift card. So I will open it up for questions now. And I appreciate all of you that attended today. And I look forward to working with you. And if you have any questions, call me, text me, email me. I'm more than happy to help you with the project that you all are working on. All righty. So we do have one question. A few of them are coming in now. So uh, what is the purpose of the perforated holes? Is the acoustical material some type of foam? And do you have an R value for insulation? That's a good question. Uh, the, uh, the holes that are in our deck are how the sound is absorbed by our deck. The acoustical element is a glass fiber insulation. And it all also has a second component that's a mesh spacer that keeps the insulation off the backside of the deck. Um, the acoustical component is for sound absorption, but the added benefit is depending on the deck profile, there is an added R value and it depends on the thickness, but that also is not a continuous situation based on the deck profile. In our dovetail decks, I believe it's about an R7 or an R8. Awesome. And then the other one that we have right now is, can you talk about the energy code side of the system? Well, the energy code side of the system is, you know, you're gonna have thermal envelope uh, materials above our deck with the required R values. Um, Obviously, the products are all made from recycled steel, as I mentioned. So those are some of the components that are part of our product line. Thank there's you. also a light, there's all, if I could also add, there's also a light reflectance uh, element as part of our deck system too, but I don't have that information off the top of my head. 
Great. So I will put one more call out for any questions. If you want to pop those in the, in the Q and a for John today, um, it looks like one more. Does the wood surface cover the perforated holes? I could not see any holes in the ceilings. The, the wood paint is a wood paint on top of our acoustical metal deck. It's not a wood surface. It's a wood film. It's a wood paint system. That's a film. Uh, so it's not technically wood. It's a paint system that looks like wood. And it, yeah. All right. If there are any more questions, please pop those in the Q and A. Um, John, I do want to thank you for this presentation for your time today. It was extremely informative. I am looking at the chat and there's a whole bunch of thank yous over there. So all of my awesome, all of my thanks and there's to you. Um, and then it looks like one more question. It's related to the previous question. Are the holes still visible? The perforations, the perforations are small three thirty seconds of a hole. Um, when you're when the product is up elevated 20 or 25 feet, um, it's going to be really hard to see the perforations. But yeah, you can see them because what you'll see in the deck system is you will see. Um, I mean, I could even can I go back a few slides and I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me go back here. Um, just real quick. If you look at this slide right here, see where it's light and dark? So the perforations are all the dark spots between here. Um, those That's perforations. So the perforations in the deck assembly will appear darker because there's holes there. Right here where it's whiter and brighter, that means there's no perforations there. Same thing in the wood profile. What you're looking at is that's the area where the perforations are right there. And I'm zooming in. So hopefully that helps. Great. Thank you for clarifying. And then uh, one other one just was placed into the into the Q&A. Uh, what is the cost for the two and a half inch deck 20 GA system? It's going to vary anywhere from, you know, it depends on whether it's painted. It could be as low as uh, $10 a square foot to $15 a square foot, depending on gauge, finish, uh, et cetera. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of our questions here and the end of the presentation. Thank you again, John. Wonderful presentation. It was absolutely beautiful. I love all the case studies and everything that you went through. It was really, really visually pleasing. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And I wanted to thank everybody else for being here. If you've made it this far, AIA California will submit your one AIA HSW learning unit and more information will be sent in a follow-up email shortly. Thank you, everyone. And thank you. Thank John. you. Yes, thank Have you. Day. You too. Bye, everyone. Thanks.